Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, the Liberal Democrats support this uh, fire safety bill and we welcome it, but it is a first and only very small step in the right direction. And as many, as, uh, many other honourable members have said, we are three years on from the tragedy of Grenfell and this bill is woefully inadequate. We support the bill and we support all of the amendments that have been tabled, um, but I'd like to speak to two of them, new clause two and four, and ask the Minister for various assurances. On new clause two about the accreditation of fire risk assessors, it is crucial that those conducting a fire risk assessment are accredited. At committee stage, those of us on the Bill Committee heard shocking evidence of unqualified fire risk assessors declaring unsafe properties as safe, and the Fire Brigades Union told us of one case which resulted in the death of one of their own. At committee stage, the Minister who responded, the Honourable Member for North West Hampshire, shared our alarm at the existence of unqualified fire risk assessors, and he posed the question as to how many decades this situation had been allowed to persist unnoticed by anybody in this House or by any government. Surely now, Madam Deputy Speaker, now is the time to ensure that this practice is brought to an end. There must be a nationally recognised qualification and certification for those charged with assessing the safety of people's homes. There also needs to be a freely accessible register of those holding such a qualification, held and maintained centrally by a public body such as a government-appointed regulator. But I would go even further than this. The Hackett Review suggested that with something so vital as fire safety, the fire risk assessments themselves should also be freely available in a publicly available register. This is vital for existing and prospective residents and for inspection and enforcement. So will this Minister provide a firm commitment on the parliamentary record this evening that fire risk assessments register will indeed be provided for in future legislation? Now to turn to new clause four on the definition of a responsible person. It is right that we are absolutely clear on the Bill's definition of a responsible person, and I welcome this clause because it ensures that a leaseholder without a direct interest in the freehold cannot be considered to be the responsible person. But outside of the scope of this Bill is a massive question about who should pay for the remedial work, and the Government has so far failed to tackle this head-on. Some leaseholders have paid building insurance premiums for years and they may still have valid new build warranties, but the financial burden of new government regulations or failures by developers is being shifted to tenants and leaseholders through increasing service charges and demands for one-off contributions. In my constituency of St Albans, one residents' association has been advised that individual leaseholders will face extra charges of around £20,000 per home. This is unacceptable. Some service charges for those residents have already increased sixfold since the Grenfell disaster in 2017 in preparation for the necessary works. So I hope that the Government would agree that whilst so many individual circumstances are incredibly financially challenging right now, to be hit by a further £20,000 bill is completely unacceptable. The Housing and Select Committee recommended in March of this year that given the urgency of these remediation works, it is necessary for the Government to provide the funding up front. So I ask the Minister this evening, will the Government at least commit, or will the Minister commit, to at least taking this up with the Chancellor and asking that this funding will be provided for in the autumn statement to make sure that all homes are safe? Madam Deputy Speaker, Residents, including in my constituency of St Albans, are trapped. They are trapped in a catch-22 between the excessive cost burden of remediation and being unable to explore any of the financial options to sell up or extend their mortgage. The Government must understand the difficulties that the current situation places on people, such as my pregnant constituent who needs to move home urgently it's so she can have a home that's more suitable for her growing family, but she can't move or the pensioner in my constituency who is reliant upon the sale of their property to support them and their care needs in their retirement. Madam Deputy Speaker, I will state once again, this fire safety bill needs to be followed up with much, much more and quickly. 
The two particular clauses I've mentioned are, are particularly important to me, but all of the amendments I support and their important first steps, and I thank honourable colleagues for tabling them. But we now need the government to turbocharge this legislative agenda and to provide the funding up front for remedial work. Without it, too many people will be held hostage by the inadequate safety standards of their own homes. When we say that an event like Grenfell must never be allowed to happen again, we must mean it. We can't just have words, we need real action.